maybe settle down, please. <laughs> Good evening to this last session of the second series of Rang Smaran, organized by the Nathan Pratishthan. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time in this whole series, I'll just give a brief, brief introduction about the series. Natran Pratishthan, the Theatre Archive and Resource Centre, has been archiving the works of theatre groups and personalities of the country. Post-independence, several groups and individuals emerged in the country who contributed significantly in the development of the theatre activity in that region. In its Run Samvad series, it has organized dialogues with several theatre personalities for the last few years. Now through Rang Smaran, which is about remembering, it wants to bring alive the memories and underline the contribution of some of the iconic theatre groups of Delhi. We began the series last year with four pioneering theatre groups, Delhi Art Theatre, Abhiyan, Dishantar and Yatrik. This year we have taken up four more significant groups of Delhi, which gave the theatre activity in the city a definite direction. These groups are Three Arts Club, Sambhav, Prayog, and Theatre Action Group. Unfortunately, the early work and contribution of most of these groups is not remembered or known to the present generation of theatre workers. Through this program, we hope to relive those memories and record an oral history. Uh, basically, Natranga Pradishthan is an archives, theatre archives, which has recorded contemporary theatre, has important documents, which can be used for research and history. And now we welcome you all for this last session, where theatre action group artists will be here, and you can hear from them their memories and kind of reconstruct the tag that started in, let me give you a brief introduction of TAG. Uh, Theatre Action Group, which is called TAG, started in 1973. Uh, according to a note given to us by Barry, uh, he says as its aims that they were sufficiently aware as a theatre group to realize the importance of being dynamic, experimental, and at the cutting edge of world trends and explorations. They felt it was important to function democratically and to value meaningful processes above traditional authoritarian instruction. And those of us who have witnessed some of the plays of Tag know that they really broke new ground. And uh, even compared to other theatre groups which were performing in English, I think this was one theatre group which was found extremely exciting and meaningful and related to the times that it was performing in. So we welcome all the members. We are very happy about some of the members. For instance, Diana is here from Italy, which is really a bonus. She was one of the founder members of TAG. And Cecil is here from London which is also <laughs> a surprise. Um, and of course, other members who have been extremely enthusiastic. So I'll call their names later. But before we start, there was a small video uh, clip given to us, which was apparently prepared on Barry's birthday, sometime back. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll be showing that. Uh, prepared by you, Sanjay? Yeah, okay, prepared by Sanjay Sujitap. Uh, so we'll be showing that because we wanted just to get give you a glimpse of the kind of work that they have done. And Barry, since he was working with TAG all this time, this gives both a history of Barry's work and TAG's work. So the little excerpt. <laughs>
Yeah. To invite on the podium Barry John, Diana Moore, Siddharth Basu, Abha Adams, Rajiv Mehrotra, who will moderate the discussion. And we hope that the other members of TAG who are present with us will also join in the memories because we didn't have enough space in this place. Therefore, we had to make this arrangement. Please. You won't be able to keep them quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Shall we request, and if you're feeling hot and stuffy, can we ask yeah. them to open that door? Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible to be here during the days and weeks. The sun comes in, the only solution is so. Well, uh, good evening, everybody, and a very, very warm welcome to our tag fraternity and uh, all of you who have come in to uh, join us, uh, not only in, in the instances, but for us, uh, a celebration tag for Barry and Dai, who I think set so many of us uh, at that time, uh, newly graduating from college on a wonderful journey, uh, not just of theater, but I really have to say of life. And um, when, uh, where is the, the culprit gone? When Keithy asked me to sort of moderate this, uh, she threatened that it was uh, Barry's decision. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so two, three days after having said yes, I began to get cold feet. Because uh, it's a very different Barry you see now. <laughs> because, uh, uh, I mean, though I have a more empathetic connect with him in terms of uh, my physiology, but, uh, you know, he snaps back. I just heard him say to Sanjay, Come on. And he told me, don't you dare. And so rumors of this had spread. And so I've been very terrified of, uh, of, just of, of so the new guy. It's more than rumors. I should, I, should, I, should, I, should, I should do myself. I mean, I should do my best. I'm already sort of struggling for words uh, to behave myself. And uh, also that uh, he mumbled outside, that uh, you know, we must be democratic and we must be uh, inclusive. And what is all this? Uh, the rule, you know, sitting across. Uh, and this really was the hallmark, I think, uh, of uh, you know the tremendous sense of community that has unfolded, even 45 years later, in us coming together, uh, was the, the community, the relationships that uh, um, tag nurtured. Uh, amongst uh, all of us young people, uh, the, the, you know, the other exchange with uh, with Barry was they said, well, you know, Director Saab, how should we go about this? He said, oh, just throw it open and wing it. Wing it. Wing it. <laughs> so that was the mantra uh, for the evening: wing it. And so I'm going to try and wing this by uh, really Barry at the center of tag and and uh, uh, Dai who really helped very, very significantly and played a very vital role uh, in, in, in putting this uh, together and, and tag on its feet. <coughs> so your stream of consciousness of memories and uh, if someone could find us a little baton or a stick, he'll, uh, you know, that'll replace the strong stony silence with, with he sort of had us tremble and, 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 and do everything that he wanted and more. Is there anyone dying to say something amongst the audience? I think. You can't get more democratic than that. We don't have any prepared lecture or speeches. <laughs> Barry, why don't we start with Dai saying a little bit about... Because, you know. See, Dai, that's very. It's yeah. only if you're dying to say something <laughs> are you entitled to speak. Dai says something a bit... And then we ask Cecil. Cecil as he's come furthest. I think I met Barry at a play of Joy Michaels. Am I right? And it started from there. And I can't really remember how, except that you had a group of people that were all these 
wonderful young students and we met and as I was on the administrative side <laughs> um, we lurched from being broke to being very broke and getting it off the ground was quite difficult. It was fun and we found a sponsor. Do you remember the sponsor we found once upon a time? And it was featured in the, uh, the show. Yeah. Are you going to have gold flake? It's no, politically no, no. incorrect. Talking about cigarettes. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. no. We, you know, we had a sponsor um, with a name, and he really pushed us into getting everything sorted and started. I remember. Where are the programs? Where, where, where are you? Have you been up there? Have you been? Everything went great until the day came that we needed the money to go and then you disappeared <laughs> never to be seen. well yes actually to be seen again two years later and when i suggested that i was a bit upset <laughs> that we had started with a minus he said yes but you'd never have done it if i hadn't <laughs> agreed to sponsor you <laughs> so I have to give it to him if we wouldn't have done it if he hadn't agreed to sponsor us. This is an old story. The sponsor backs out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Left in the lurch. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's how we started. That's, that's good, where we started. The learning curve. Um, and really I can take no credit for anything because I left after two years and then everyone went on to do these wonderful things and become <coughs> the brilliant people that they were there and had the chance through TAG, I think, to be helped to become who they did later become. And I think that's a huge credit to all of them. And with that, I'm extremely proud. And the rest is up to you, dear. Belia. <laughs> Belia. <laughs> She's being modest, actually, uh, not giving herself credit for all that she did. She wasn't just there witnessing everything that was happening. Uh, Dai was, you know, one of the most remarkable things is how the hell was tag formed? And that, that was the question which Kirti gave to me. And then I thought about it, it's, it's, it's a matter of fate. A mistake. A mistake, almost. Well, almost. <laughs> what was an English man doing in Delhi in 1973, in the 70s? Roaming around, you know, doing theater of all things. When actually he was halfway a hippie, he could have been sitting in corner place begging for food and money like the other hippies of that time. But I was working for a theatre group called Yatrik. I had worked for Yatrik since 1970. We were the first group to work in what was then called grandiosely the Indian National Theatre. <laughs> Uh, after, a year, after a year, Jo and Michael and her family went off to America on a lecture tour for some reason and left a very incompetent committee in charge with the result that we were thrown out within a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we meaning the group, me meaning I was on the streets because I had nowhere else to stay. I ended up at the uh, YMCA in Goro Place, a very romantic place. Uh, if, you've ever, if you are in that way, do drop in and check it out for yourself. Um, in lieu of some theatre programs I was doing for them. Um, during that, it did allow me that year, fallow year as it were, to start doing productions at St. Stephen's College, at Lady Sri Ram College. I was teaching at Jesus and Mary Convent School, little girls. Um, yeah, so that got me out and about the city, got me a reputation for doing not bad work. And uh, Joy Michael came back after that year um, we're talking about like 72 now and she then she managed to arrange for a studio space in Connor Place above Siemens I don't know if anyone remembers that or ever went there 
it was sort of in the under the control of the Max Muller Papa. So we started this, that, that was new, a new experience, it was quite exciting, you know, and I did rejoin John Michael roughly for a year, doing these more experimental plays in a much more intimate space and sort of, and the audience was like you are now, you know, within reach. <laughs> um, that was interesting, but then, like I said, did, you came to work for Yatrik. Yes. Well, you were helping out, you volunteered, you were helping with costs. Yeah. yeah. I that. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember meeting you there. Right. And it kind of began to... Yeah, and then all the others, I mean, people from St. Stephen's, and Babu was one of them, who started acting in the trick plays, uh, therefore. But we got together, we were not satisfied with the actress' yes. way of yeah. doing things and their sort of ambitions about the kind of plays that they wanted to do. So we contrived devilishly <laughs> to set up a new group, which then was called TAG, Theatre Action Group. And largely, therefore, a student group. I think one of the distinguishing features about TAG was its youth. I really do. It was astonishing. Of course, every theatre group has youngsters, has college students, has members. But we were <coughs> basically all students. Even me, I had never run a theatre group before. And this is where Dai came in. If it had been left to me, Tag would not have been formed. <laughs> she was one of those who pushed us into it, got us organised, mainly because that she hasn't mentioned this yet. Diane had come from a, a job with a very renowned British theatre company called The Citizens in Glasgow. Not as an actress, but as a stage manager. So you know that whole side of things, the stage management, the organisation, the way about approaching a production, uh, with all the nitty-gritty of lists of costumes and of props and <coughs> the organized, she really got us into shape uh, right from the start. Was how did, she was roaming the world at that time mm -hmm. in a Renault, a green Renault car. <laughs> Renault what brought her to Delhi to meet me in the Arctic along with all these other student types who knows? I mean, it's so weird. It's that's, it's fate. It was right. It was right. It was, it was right. a good thing. But strange that it happened. I can't explain it. It's it's not like one was in India with, on a mission or came with some great ambition to form a company. Nor for her. No. She was just roaming the world. Yeah. Uh, nothing else but to I do. I didn't want to go back. <laughs> I wanted to stay in India. And I miss theatre, and that's how I think I came to see you. Yeah. And that's it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and Does anyone have any explanation, any enlightenment about <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened in 1973 that got this group going? Well, I think it has to be seen in the whole context of what was happening globally. Something was afoot. Definitely. Everywhere. What happened in New York? I mean, why should it happen in Tokyo? You know, and all the way through between. So everything was shifting, and everything thought things were possible, you know, to do and to. I mean, that could be one explanation beyond fate. I, 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 <laughs> maybe, uh, they're recording it. Well, you know, uh, I was, is, uh, sorry. Yeah, but I also think um, they were particularly bright amazing group of people that you had around you and without, without the energy of all of them I don't think it would have ever got off the ground but there was so much energy in those young people and so much desire to do something new to do something fresh to do something wonderful that which they did um, and have gone on to do so I was flagging. Uh, no, I'm sorry. What? 
No, no, please. Just the chronology of it, because uh, Himanshu was uh, uh, Himanshu was one of the uh, signatories to the the founding document of uh, uh, TAG, and and sort of I was the junior signatory to that. So uh, Himanshu, in fact, had engaged with the whole formation process. It's all, it's on. No, so you uh, can I can just speak otherwise. So I, I just wanted to sort of uh, remind Barry and I that we did 35 shows of Andrew Cleves and the Lion <laughs> for Yatra. And that's when we've got really, really, really fed up of doing work with Yatrek and said, you got far more talent than uh, doing Androcles and the Lion. So it, it was uh, late at night when the lights went off in June Myers' apartment in <laughs> Sabdajab uh, development that, area, yeah. where we coined Theater Action Group. And I remember Barry immediately went on to Aubrey Beardsley's books and logos and created this wonderful first logo for TAG. Yes, but that, that was, was our big sponsor, you've yeah. got to have a tantrum. Right. Yeah, we've got a choice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think if anything, yeah, if I would sort of uh, uh, give a vote of confidence uh, was A, your talent and dice pushing us. And I think those 35 productions with Andrew Cleese and what the Lion. You, what attracted you? What made you a part of it? Well, well it was just this crazy, fantastic talent uh, that, I mean, I, I think you, you, you were. No talent proven yet. No. We haven't got anything. No, I mean. The, the talent. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there were the dreams and. Um, I, I think just not doing something very mediocre like we're <coughs> doing uh, with Yatrek, if I may say so. I think that was the most important thing. But one thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I would like to say one thing. I think Barry was really inspiring. I mean, uh, I have a chronology of plays which has been written out in Barry's handwriting where everybody's been noted as to when they came in to do the first play and nobody left. <laughs> Nobody left. There's a lot of inspiration. There was a time. People were young. We were in college. We had yeah. the time. We were excited. It was the 70s. It was the hippie generation. We wanted to make a difference. And you certainly, you, you embodied that, that we can do it together. I don't think that's unimportant at all. Correct. Well, Dag, you do many more productions of Androcles and the Lion for the record. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. okay. I'll just take my leap from exactly what Radhika said, because I think Androcles was one direction from Yatrik that you said that when you all came together for us, many of us, it began a little earlier at Yatrik. Uh, we were 16, I, I was 16. Vidyun was there, Aldo, I think, was there, Amit Jairam was there, Dilet was there, and a Yatrik production Barry did, mixed doubles which also had a lot of titans of then English theatre in Delhi, Marcus Murch and Brava Tonk yeah, and Sushma yeah. Seth and right. Rebecca yeah. Sudan and right. everybody was in it and you know, uh, so that was one stirring. After that, uh, I think the next, when Rajiv and Rajiv were secretaries, <laughs> Rajiv Tuve, Rajiv Merutra, <coughs> Dram Sok and Sheikh Sok respectively, then they, were in, they invited Barry to do two plays. This only women first of all, which was radical. We had a rock group in the balcony and Sanju Acharya riding up the ramp on his bike and a lot of ladies from Lady Shriram College right. and MH, I think some from MH too. And then followed by Hamlet, in which, which we toured to, right. to Dune School and the other place. Mayo. And Mayo, that's right. I didn't want that's to miss that. I didn't want to miss that. I remember it. That's why I saw it. That's, that's why you saw it before you came out. But there you were. But right through that period, what she was saying is essentially uh, one way to look at it, one way to look at it, is that Tag has been a gurukul. Right? Yeah. With Absolutely. Barry as the charismatic, talented, and very reluctant guru. <laughs> right? <laughs> because it is been like that. So, absolutely. But so many things that he stood for, uh, there's always a teacher in him, which is one thing that helped what happened. There was always a teacher. 
He was good with young people, moving around. His sense of theater and trends, uh, his reading and meticulous approach, methodology, his calligraph calligraphic and writing, his talents for set design, a total sense of theater, total theater. That means sets, that means graphics, that means lighting, that means performance, that means ensemble work. All of that was something that was novel and very, something that charged up a lot of us. And the other thing that Radhika mentioned, I think, was that it was a time of change. This was just after Woodstock, a little bit after Woodstock. So, uh, 71 was the time that I did the first play, I think, uh, with Barry, and it began like that. There was revolution in the air on the other side, there was Che Guevara and everything else happening. So, and there was youth power, this is, you know, subsequent to what was happening over there, it was catching up here. I think, uh, uh, down the corridors of Stevens and elsewhere, you know, uh, the sweet smell of hash was everywhere. And, uh, you know, Lal Salam was the other thing that was happening. So between the two things, we wanted change. We wanted things to be different, including the content of the plays. I think that was very important, that we wanted to deal with things that made a difference, that connected. So I think the two coming together, the content, the sense of presentation, the method, you know, the, the way things were developed, that was all very exciting and the sense of ensemblehood, yeah. the collective that came together, that people played off each other, Barry encouraged it, he became part of it. Uh, Dai used to do yoga and that first trip after the, 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 the Dune School performance particularly of uh, Hamlet, where we actually dug a grave for Ophelia, there was a bamboo grove at the back and um, it was lovely. And uh, Paramvir, the, the, the crazy gifted composer, was you know sort of consoling his trumpet and saying sadly it's got a cold. <laughs> so that was all of that happened. Out of that, in the summer of '73, I was 18. The group was born, right. and that summer uh, was the tour of Amon Beth, How young class in Kyoto King those kids, and in between a workshop began with the kids play in the morning typically, then the workshop explaining the physical and vocal vocabulary and, and what went into the play, what the play was about, a study of power and everything like that. And in the evening a show. And we did it at schools and colleges across Missouri and similar. I've lost count of how many. 18. 18. And I'm delighted that many of those are here. You mentioned Dai, of course, was there, managing this brood who did everything from lifting to loading to ringing up lights. Dicky was there. Uh, there was, uh, uh, you know, to setting up, to striking down, to staying, sleeping, eating, doing, you know, playing football with the kids. Uh, among those people, I'm delighted that, you know, so many of us say Himanshu, of course, is here, Cecil is here, uh, Vivek is here from Washington. That's right, Vivek Shivasta. There's Cecil, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, Rajiv Dubey hasn't been able to join us, sadly. Ravi is no longer with us, right. and we miss him, as we do Lilith and Lucian, Shishu Repartment, and Sanju Acharya. Right. Yeah. Um, but everybody else who's come together, but that was part of 73. And like Rajiv said, it uh, had a profound impact of, on many of us. Not just in terms of our work, many of those things we carry in different ways, but also in terms of our lives and attitude and what we did. Perhaps not in the way of theater directly, but in some way or the other. Uh, Mira Nair, who uh, has been part of TAG, just met her day before, she'll be joining us later tonight. She was just telling Rosa, who's also here, that you know how much of a difference it made to her, how much it uh, influenced what she was doing. There's Khalid here, who from Barry's introduction to us of poor theater and all of that, actually went to Poland and took it several steps further in several different directions. So it's made a lot of difference to a lot of us. And I think a lot of it had to do with what not you, of course, and what you stood for. And that's what made it possible for us to do what we did. Thank you. Agreed. Dai, I had the uh, daunting task of stepping into your shoes as administrative director <laughs> and getting some organization to this, you know, <coughs> extremely talented and energetic group of people. I have one story that I want to share about sponsors. 
and I can't remember who that was, even the, the, for the first sponsor, but we got our biggest break when we did our festival. And in those days, it was impossible to get money, unlike the sponsorship culture that exists at the moment. And I remember, I even remember what I was wearing. We had to hitch a ride to Connaught Place. We didn't have cars. To be able to go and make a pitch. There was Barry, there was me, and maybe one other, I'm not sure. And we walked into the offices of Mr. Gurpreet Singh, yep, Continental CDI. Devices in the CDI. CDI. Cold call. And what an amazing man. He heard our views, he heard our plans, he was excited, and he said yes on the spot. And we were so giddy, you know, we just didn't know what to do. Should we jump? Should we hug him? Is, what is protocol? But that was the first break. I, but it was always hard. It was always hard to balance the books. And I must say this, that everybody scoured their homes for props, for costumes, for food, for everything. And um, it was one large community. And we gained our skills. We gained a sense of being together. We learned a great deal from, from you, Barry, in so many different ways. And, yeah. On this theme of uh, sponsorship, I just wanted to share a, a pretty strange experience that we had. This was mid-80s, mid it must have been 87, 88, where Pan Am agreed to sponsor shows of ours. There were three or four plays that we did, but the sponsorship was in kind. So they gave us air tickets to the US, which now meant that Sanjoy and I had to sell these tickets in order to raise money for, for our plays. Um, so that was, uh, and it was actually on the basis of a failed sponsorship that I got involved um, beyond being an actor and a sound designer, which was when, and this goes back to LSR. So we go back to LSR, 1985, when we did this amazingly ambitious uh, musical called Annie Get Your Gun. And um, that also marked the introduction of Shah Rukh Khan into the right. group. And um, Sanjoy and Barry had this supposed deal with LSR, where they were going to pick up a substantial portion of the costs. But it was never inked. The deal was. It was actually bad. with Amita's father, the gun runner. Pradeep. No, but he paid. Pradeep. No, he paid some amount. <laughs> yeah, Pradeep Mera. Pradeep Mera. <laughs> but uh, the money never came, and so at the end of it, Tag was left holding a debt of eighty thousand rupees. In 1985, that was a lot of money. Um, <laughs> which was the time at which Sanjoy came to me and said, "Will you help us with our finances?" So that's when. When I got in one and also sold Pan Am tickets to, to finance. <laughs> 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 the tickets were transferable, apparently. Uh, no, so, so they gave us an authority to sell so many tickets. So we would then get them issued in somebody's father's name or some other company's name, and uh, then they would make a matching donation to tag. It was all, I'm not sure it was entirely legal, but um, <laughs> it worked out for a few years. <laughs> You know, compared to kind of the theatre that's happening and sponsorship, which is all whoever, you know, pays the piper, calls the tune. Calls the tune. And so they would do it like that. So most plays that travel inside, outside the country, they have minimal everything, sets, set up, everything. They read if necessary, uh, you know, because who's going to remember lines and figure out and they move from place to place and do whatever it is. Compared to that, one of the things that I managed, I think, is the eclectic choice of plays and that's something that Barry drove he did what he wanted to do mm. and everybody else ran around and made it happen in terms of organizing and this and the other but it was very A. Macbeth A. Macbeth was a challenge the first play that we took around it was a challenging play because it wasn't Shakespeare's Macbeth it was a collage Charles, Charles, Charles yeah it was a collage done by Charles Maravitz it was you know, played it around, interpreted a certain way, and the language, the vocabulary of the play, that the way Barry did it, was very, it, it just didn't use words. It had a lot of physical uh, movement, very choreographed, a lot of chanting, a lot of effects, uh, all that kind of thing. It was difficult. And yet, IFAX was when we first did our Delhi shows, after the Hill shows, and what a, we had full houses, what an impact it made. 
followed by Godo. These are not bedroom farces. That too happened in an intelligent way. <coughs> Uh, Mrs. Gandhi came to one. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> she asked for, and that, uh, I, can, I still wonder, why would, why would Mrs. Gandhi have asked for what the butler saw? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's what she asked for. So that's She's not a human. It, absolutely. <laughs> and that's what we did. And um, one of the things I remember, which is kind of emblematic of my whole feeling about tech, was again trying to get money, and we were trying to get a brochure done, and the brochure had to be, we had that good brochure for Mrs. Gandhi. <laughs> and every time I went to the printer to get the brochure, out of station, and it was never ready. By the time it was two days before we were about to start, I went for the last time and I remember it was monsoon and it was wet and it was filthy and I trudged through this thing and I was in a very bad temper by the time I got there. And I was greeted by out of station. Yes. Can't be done. And I hit the roof, which made him laugh. And then he just went, you are not understanding human element. <laughs> I have lived on this maxim ever since. I think tag is an example, an example of human elements, and I think it was very much. And in Italy, where we suffer from a terrible bureaucracy, um, when people say to me, "How do you survive Italy and the bureaucracy?" Yes. No problem. <laughs> you have to understand human elements. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to say something. So I think one of the very important reasons why Theatre Action Group did what it did for as long as it did and held its place is because there was a, for at least 10 years, there was a core group of at least 20 people who met, not monthly, but weekly. We didn't just meet to do a play. We just met to do workshops. We met to chat. We met to drink. We met to hash, we met to dance. We were meeting like a community week after week after week. There's over 20 people, 30 people. And if you have to, I mean, if you really want to write it down, you see the interpersonal relationships between people within that group are pretty solid. I mean, a lot of people got married to each other within that group. I mean, it's like there was nobody else, you know? And I think that has a lot to do with the core of that group. And we didn't just audition, we didn't just rehearse, everybody did everything. We had to do the costumes, we had to do the sets, we had to carry stuff, we had to read every play, we didn't do every play. And it was all in Barry's, Jampura, Barsati. We almost died there falling off the roof hundreds of times, drunk out of our minds. It was a very, very important time for so many people to be together for so long and so intensely would make a difference, wouldn't it? Anyway. Very slight Cecil in the day. I, uh, I just want to share a memory. Sure. I uh, came to tag, I was earlier in the uh, uh, IIC Theatre Club, which is just started and all that. We were doing almost a play a month. Then I met probably Raji Mehrutra or somebody. Play a month? In IIC Theatre Club. I see. Do we used to do it. We used to do it. Yeah. But different. No, it wasn't the same. We were managing it, and a lot of groups were coming and performing. Different directors were performing, and we were the stock actors. It lasted for two years, you know, and so that was quite quite an exciting thing. And then I bumped into Rajiv Mehrotra, and I remember coming and uh, for rehearsals for Pontifex. At that time, we were rehears We we got a rehearsal space at top of Shriram Center. It was not rented out. Right. It was a huge hall, almost like a yeah. um, badminton court or something like that. Yeah. And Barry John was so mesmerizing, he got us so much into the workshop. <coughs> we, did, we were doing one uh, workshop in which we were animals and birds. And I was a bird. <laughs> and I took my role so seriously, I got onto a chair and started flying. And the chair actually started flying. It flew across the hall because it was all very smooth and all that. <laughs> and I landed in both my hands. <laughs> And actually, I fractured both my hands. And I, <laughs> and I remember doing the play with a plaster on each arm. Who was your therapist at that time? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I've had many accidents, but that's, that wasn't one of them. But that was, that was 
That was just one of them. Ganju and I were the only characters in that particular scene. And I performed with plaster in both my forearms very happily. <laughs> because the whole thing, the energy that was there in the group. I remember some other people are not here. Vijay Tankha, Sushmita Mukherjee. Or the, the, the different Sankhas in Delhi, I don't know, somehow he didn't get the message or whatever it is. So it was very exciting, very, and the kind of plays that were chosen, I mean, uh, they were very different from you know, what the other groups were doing, you know. Marat Saad, Equus, you know. So it, that with uh, what um, Basu said about the, the content of the of theatre, it was so exciting and the group was so attractive. People came and we had uh, full housing and all that, I remember, for the shows. So okay. that's okay. it. So I just want to, you know, uh, Sasal, Khaled, Vivek, Vidya. So please, do, and Laila, so please don't just sort of sit and wait. Alu, Vidya, Alu, Alu. Alu. So let's just go. So no, Sasal's right there. Thank we'll just, please don't wait to be. <laughs> Come on, Sasal. Oh. Uh, but I, I don't know whether, you know, part of the, uh, uh, you know, Babu's, Babu's sort of spoken most eloquently and summed up most of what the history, you know, probably is. <coughs> uh, and I think maybe Stevens and I think all the, you know, the main colleges would take credit for already drawing um, people who, I think Dai said, you know, people, they were just a bright bunch of people, you know. Um, and. I don't know. I mean, how do we trace our roots of what brought us into theatre? You know, did we make conscious decisions? I, I don't think, I think it sort of, more it chose me, I just drifted along. And now I've ended up to sort of, not good for anything, but, <laughs> but memories, but what fascinating, lovely memories. And, um, you know, I, I, we mentioned the car, I never forget the car, because <laughs> it brought up part of the sets. Yeah. <laughs> and we were up going Missouri incline and it spluttered to a halt and on and we were pushing it as well on Amit Bhatia's foot and we all said you know let's take a break and he carried on you know holding the car and he said my, my foot my <laughs> <laughs> everybody was you know lighting cigarettes and stuff like that etc and then <laughs> he said it a bit louder and sort of die got back into the car and you know revved it <laughs> 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 anyway, so who's next? Amit Bhatia, RIP as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I would have been terribly intimidated. Mm -hmm. I was pretty much along for the ride. I think, you know, there's a bunch of people, a bunch of friends, we got on together and things happened, you did what you had to do to be part of that group. So, so I, I, I see it from sort of the inside out, not from this, you know, sort of wonderful uh, perspective that sort of Babu sort of put on this. And just on the, on the inspiration thing, yeah, there was a guy called uh, Jim Pepperling yeah. at the American School. Mm. For some reason, I guess he didn't find anybody else to go there for rehearsal, so he cast <laughs> me in a play or, or two. And then we got invited to a cast party. Now, going to a house in Shanti Niketan at that time with all of these Americans and a fancy bar, and, and, and Barry was there, I'm coming to sort of the inspiration part. So about 3 o'clock in the morning or 4, uh, we asked uh, for, for another scotch and I think I was given a drink and Barry was also given a drink. I didn't know that it wasn't scotch. And uh, this glass sort of flew across the room and smashed on the wall on the other side. And somebody said, American horse piss. And that was, <laughs> that was Barry, you know? I did not. <laughs> And then, then we were, then we were in the car, we were in the cab, you know, 
<laughs> heading sort of south from there, or, or, you know, or north rather. <coughs> so that, that was inspiration. Now we could take on the Americans and Jim Pepper and <laughs> some sense of confidence. And, and so, so, yeah, it was, it was truly important for me that I still remember one of the few things I do. But, but just on the, on, the, on, the, on the cast and the fracture, Alu here, yeah. he refused to come onto the stage with a, with a cast. In, in, and, and Barry had to be said, sort of, yeah. you know, with a sword in one hand and the book in the other hand, <laughs> yeah. sort of plowing his way through the evening. <laughs> it's about, Madhu, for some reason, you, 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 sorry, I don't know the name of Hamlet. 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 No, no, not Hamlet. The person who came with two cards in his hand. Yeah. Oh, and Manor, Manor. 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 Okay. This is Manor. Okay. So, so, Alu didn't sort of display that kind of courage. But anyway, just to the room. Vicky? Annie and Vicky. Annie. Go ahead. No, I think I don't have much to add to what uh, Babu has uh, described. But on the question of the origin of the group, uh, at least from the uh, angle of the people who were in St. Stephen's, uh, a fairly major change took place in the theatre scene only in, our, in my third year, in Babu's second year, uh, in 72, when we opted out of the scheme then prevalent that every play was directed by one of the lecturers of English, uh, <laughs> Benjamin Gilani, Kaur Manjit Singh, <laughs> whose knowledge of theatre, to, as we discovered later, was rather limited. <laughs> but they, it was obligatory because they were the staff advisor or something of the, of the Sheikh Sok and the Ram Sok. Uh, I think wisdom in our third year was taken and I, that was when Barry was invited to do Disorderly Women. Uh, which caused a lot of disorder in St. Stephen's College, if you recollect. <laughs> um, aroused a lot of controversy. Uh, but building up from that, we moved to, as he moved through his Hamlet days, and that was the first time I think we took a play outside college. Hamlet <laughs> yes. to Ifax or some such place? No. Yes, yes. Also, yeah, I think it was the first time we took, a play, we took a play outside college. Otherwise, it used to be done on the premises. Uh, by the time, of course, 73 comes along, you had this group of loonies who'd been together for about a year or two, and I think the um, LSR contingent had joined us by 1972. And I think it's what you call intelligent, we call loonies, but it's that group of people who uh, somehow kept it going in the initial years. And uh, despite maintaining fairly rigorous academic schedules and such like, I think uh, by and large that is why, I, and uh, as Vivek has very rightly put it, it wasn't, uh, most of us were really, I mean, it was not as if someone was a committed thespian or an actor or a lightsman. <laughs> we, we just went along as a group and uh, somehow it all clicked. And we owe a lot of thanks to both Dai and Barry uh, who somehow brought us together, otherwise we would have still been with Manjit Singh and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's it, it's often the actors that get uh, get noticed and talked about mostly. Dinka was one of the stars of that because of the extraordinarily creative lighting that somehow he managed to uh, arrange for. <laughs> with very little. With very little. With very little. With he began no, and then Asha too was there. Asha. And she picked the key and from there. Asha, I remember yeah, Dinkar bullying the life out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this amazing memory about him uh, joking about these uh, downhill cigarettes that I used to smoke. Yeah. Later on we became very good friends and I think it was Fifteen years later, that Dinkar was smoking downhill cigarettes. Those were the charming days, Asha. And I have to tell uh, you guys of this incident. I'm forgetting which the play was. You came to direct a play in LSR, which was uh, the Ortolan. When we Ortolan. burnt the Trojan oh. women. Trojan, Trojan women. women. And uh, it was quite unusual because I was uh, on the lights it with Dinkar Cole. With every show, fortunately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That uh, the auditorium burns down. Yeah. yeah. And I have when to also ironically the last scene in the play <laughs> is Troy burning. burning. Yeah. The women of Troy that story. They're all enslaved and shipped off right. shipped off back to Greece. 
The last image is of flame. Yeah. Overnight, it really happened. <laughs> and we had to face an inquiry, and I remember the people who were inquiring after us, he only asked me one question, because I suppose it was a woman doing the lights, is, uh, you know, when you put off the power, you put it off and on the wrong way. I mean, when you put yeah. it on, you put it on this way, and you put it off uh, the other way. So he gathered it was not us, and nothing to do with the lighting, I think. It was something, somebody had left something in the hall. Goodness, I'm feeling overwhelmed because uh, I think I came along a little later. Uh, although when I was in school, um, my whole universe was um, turned upside down because I had an elocution teacher. I was good at elocution and the elocution teacher suddenly changed and there was Barry John who was in this convent, uh, which some of us might have been in as well. And he was, uh, so there was a revolution that happened. And uh, I think, and then after that, there was Young Stages Club somewhere. And then, yeah, and then Oedipus, I think, was the first play that I did with Tag. That's pretty early on. When was Oedipus? 75. 75. CDI. He started work in 74. 74. 74 August. Oh, 74 August. Started work in 74 August. Okay, it was actually to 74. You're right. It's 74 August. Yeah. Because 74 began with Through Pablo's Eyes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, Andy, do you want to. Say more. Well, I could say more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now or never? Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, I guess I'll just not repeat everything uh, that other people have said, but I really want to say that for me, it really met a need um, that I had of creativity. It was such a creative place, and everybody was there, and there was this incredible kind of buzz. And, uh, and yeah, it, it was very important for me. and. Um, and what I what especially had meaning was that it was not just theatre for for you know for the pretty things, but it was there was also this this social the relevant social the, the education the theatre and education the workshops that we did. So yeah, it was all in all, it was quite um it was a tremendous experience. I'm feeling yes. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm, my perspective is very different from Annie's because for me theatre was all about pretty things. And I would say my whole approach to drama, right, from sixteen was just pretty predatory at, uh, at best. And uh, I don't remember coming into any of this with any huge social objectives or <laughs> desire to change the world or anything like that. I was doing a history course and I was bored out of my wits. <laughs> and you know, this was something that well, gave me some sort of sort of a social enterprise where you could have fun. And uh, maybe what we liked about Tag was that uh, Barry was such a hands-off, lazy director <laughs> that he never directed you at all. I mean. He just sort of let you do your own thing. And it's only if you were going terribly wrong would he kind of intervene and say, maybe, you know, I, I actually have never heard Barry speak, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Barry never said anything. You had to actually guess uh, what his reaction was from the, the overall visage of Barry. And you know, I mean, you could do that, or if you were lazy, you know, you could also just carry on doing your own thing. So it was a sort of a free-for-all, very Swedish kind of a commune. <laughs> Without the sex. Without the sex. Uh, and, um, and so I think a lot of young people found it very easy to come in without, uh, you know, having to commit their entire lives to it. And that was a good thing. Because do remember people that at the very same time, you did have the National School of Drama, you know, where you actually had to commit your entire life when you came in. <coughs> so that was happening in India, I mean, in Delhi, not in India, in India, in Delhi. So I think there was another bunch of guys who didn't want to commit their whole life to drama, just wanted to commit, 
you know, to something. And uh, they hadn't quite figured out what. And this was a nice thing, an easy thing, and a, uh, you know, a socially productive thing to commit to. And uh, so that's what explains why I was there. Um, but I did certainly enjoy my times there. It became almost an obsession. And I kind of, if I borrow a phrase from something that with you should know, I mean, I actually saw my tag days, you know, through a pre-coital uh, haze of Pony Scott. <laughs> to borrow from, to borrow from, uh, what is that very called, Aaron? Pre-coital Craven A, Second World War, uh, you were there. Yes, yes, yes. People brought different motives to it. For me, it was very serious. I actually thought it would be a repertory, there would be some communal aspects to it. And I was very serious. I tried to, after my master's, I tried to live on the theatre for a year. And not, you know, the kind of work was not exciting enough, didn't happen. So I started picking up stuff on documentary and things like that. But for a lot of us, it was very different. One of them, I think, has been Khalid. I think I, uh, not I think, but I did come into TAG uh, entirely by accident without having known anything about it before. I was sitting in a Delhi special bus uh, uh, and with my friend I saw Ganju is unfortunately out of town today. And we saw this advertisement for uh, production which it said that it was going to be workshop based for three months and that uh, you need not have had acting experience before which I had not had at all. And, um, but uh, that uh, some physical ability was desirable and I was a gymnast and we decided that if the other went, the other would go and we turned up at this uh, workshop for Oedipus at that time in the grounds of uh, the uh, Columbus School. At Columbus. And uh, I landed in a place which uh, transformed my life, uh, <coughs> partly because of the uh, dynamism and um, incredible talent, talent of Barry and partly because of this wonderful group of people that uh, are still my family. Uh, strangely enough, it was that first theatre experience that um, uh, remained my main interest because I found out much later that it was supposed to be some, uh, based around the work of a Polish person called Jerzy Grotowski. And um, uh, he fascinated me, and uh, yes, eventually I did go to Pol Poland to pursue him. Um, and um, uh, you mentioned uh, about the National School of Drama, but and I had, I have had uh, <coughs> from some time after leaving Tag, uh, regular connection with this institution, and I often feel that. Uh, theater Action Group was uh, so much a better school because we did such a range of different productions. We were involved, as has been said, with every aspect of it which we did ourselves, which I find something quite lacking in students today. Uh, mm, and um, I think I lost my thread of thought, so I better. You also got a lot of very nice second hand jeans. Well, I obviously came into tag from a very different direction. I was much older, I was Khalid's elder sister, and I think Barry and I were more or less the same age. So I saw tag from a very different perspective, partly because I was not acting. I think my first interaction was uh, not with TAG but with the Shakespeare Society when I did, Khalid asked me to do a poster for the serpent and I think... Baal. Baal. Yes. Baal. Baal. Yes. Baal. Yes. Baal. Yes. Bricks, Baal. That's right. And that's where I first met Mira too, I think. Yes. Um, and then uh, I was asked to do the equus heads, the horses heads. And I remember going to Barry's um, Jampura studio, which was so meticulous and so neat. 
And I suddenly, while talking to Barry, who was not a, not a very chatty fellow, uh, I suddenly noticed that my chappals were both going in different directions on the floor. And I was sitting on the bed. And I could see Barry looking at them sideways and sort of feeling that this doesn't quite look neat in his head. And I was wondering how I could retrieve my chappals and put them straight under the bed. Uh, but anyway, is <laughs> uh, so then I uh, did the heads for Equus and somewhere then was asked to do the sets and costumes for Super Jesus Christ Superstar and uh, that was extraordinary I think because uh, I was given a budget of I think about 20,000 uh, and I had to do the sets plus I think about 60 costumes uh, including kings and angels and whatever and uh, sort of pouring over this and going into the gullies of Chandni Chok to find fabric and, um, and I remember, I don't know whether it was when I was doing, showing Barry the sets which I had created out of cardboard and little bits of wood or whether it was for Amadeus later but there was an extraordinary episode where from Barry's bathroom came very mysterious sort of sounds <laughs> and uh, screams and whimpers and I later discovered that someone was having a baby in yeah, his bathroom for the end time for the end <coughs> for the end <coughs> in the bathroom in the bar. so I mean all this was <laughs> extraordinary <laughs> and another great day fun the, the yeah <laughs> still another day and I think that actually typifies the kind of very eclectic, holistic, warm, all-embracing atmosphere of Thai. I was a little bit of an agony aunt and there were many romances going on in Tag at the time <laughs> and uh, which I looked at and I do agree that there was a spirit of great freedom and camaraderie. There were kind of relationships between uh, men and women which were different from the very cliche dates and uh, sort of at Gay Lords and La Bohème, which, which were otherwise the way that the sexes interacted. And I think it was fantastic and I've seen all of you grow over the years in very different directions and yet this <coughs> difference, that spark is still very much there, the search for excellence. I agree that Barry didn't talk very much but he was extraordinarily dynamic and very, very good, perhaps through his silences, of extracting the best. Uh, I think a lot of all of you were quite in awe of him. I remember going to show some costumes and things and people whispering to me, that Barry's in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> Down. I'm sort of putting a bad meter outside your door. <laughs> <laughs> Next person. But it was a wonderful time and I think that the way that he and all of you created magic out of so little is actually something that we should be doing in India today. And anyway, it's lovely to be here. I hope that something comes out of this meeting apart from a taped conversation. A party, a party. <laughs> may, may I just add, uh, I, I just want to add, uh, you know, this whole air that Barry, you portray about being easy and uh, as Arno said, you know, lazy and things like that. I, I mean, uh, to, to my recollection, I mean, you were the most methodical guy I've ever yeah. come across. Every single scene, every single move was thought through. It was plotted, written down in your immaculate handwriting with the lights and everything else. And you let the actors find their space, but you knew exactly where the hell the people had to go. And I remember this particularly because uh, we tried uh, Roshan Fate, if you remember, in Waiting for Godot. And out of some tantrum, Roshan walked away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we said, so what? I said, don't worry. Let's get on with it. And we continued in the hot summer or at 12 noon in the afternoon, continued to rehearse. And you knew exactly where to take Waiting <coughs> for Godot was. So I think 
just in terms of your perseverance in keeping tag alive and keeping the players going the way you wanted to do them was just fantastic and I think that's really the core essence of tag. Yeah. Did you? Uh, after. Yeah. <laughs> no, so coming back to why we joined TAG, uh, as Babu mentioned, I mean like just 17 years of age, we did big struggles together, but I think a lot of us who were at that time in college, we were looking to do something more than just going to college and going to the movies and spending our lives the way everybody else was, and this gave us a reason, and far from just being a pastime, it became our life. I think there was no other life for all of us, except tag, whether it was, as you said, props, costumes, Abba's house, which was the Adda. It was all about, and there was a group, I think it was a like-minded group that came together, and that's why those these friendships have survived. And I would also like to say that I owe a big thank you to Barry for never having cast me in a play. Big <laughs> 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 Mixed up, it was very but that was that had nothing to do with that because, yeah, those are I was there, but I'm saying that for all the years, the fact that whether it was admin after Abha left, whether it was costumes, whether it was props, whether it was logistics, I think in a sense that dictated what I did with my life later because the kind of work, the kind of the work that we did with media makers, the kind of events that we organized. That stood me in real good stead because that made you realize that there was a dignity to all that. It was not about the people like Alu who were on stage all the time, but it was those who were the backbone, which was us. So yeah, thank you, Barry, for never having cast me. <laughs> Make up for it. Yep. But in some ways, I think it led to your making Habitat Center the cultural love of the city. Yeah. No, I think it all impacted. Yeah, so of course, of course. Sanjay? No, the only time you did cast me was Aim with Bell, which I couldn't come for. So. <laughs> no, God bless you for being the backbone of, the, of, of any group, you and others like you, did all the dirty <coughs> backstage, off stage. Very exciting stuff. backstage, I can tell you that. Not not noises off with Bab and Zitula, I think God knows what, what else was happening. I think for me, um, uh, the, the the period of college, I endorse absolutely everything everybody says, including Alu, because there were elements of what everybody has said in my experience of tag and the people that embodied tag. Uh, of course, Barry was central, and I think the silences communicated so much that forced us to actually think and perform as distinct from maybe Al Qazi Saab, who was referred to but not mentioned in terms of a name. And I think what has taught me my lessons for life in whatever I chose to do or did post tag whether it was First City and the kind of detailing that we went into in getting a magazine out or whatever, the rigor uh, that actually TAG taught you through not being directed, but being expected <coughs> to perform uh, through your own uh, understanding or machinations or whatever the word is, uh, was the rigor that taught a lot of us, whether it was media makers, first city, whatever, even uh, your production house, etc to actually set up and do something on your own in a completely new field uh, at the time and be a pioneer because of the little lessons that came out of TAG. And also the sensitivity to the arts, to the kind of work that was chosen to be performed, whether it was A. Macbeth, which I saw but wasn't a part of, through Pablo's eyes, the process was critical into one's own understanding of oneself and one's own journey on the planet, which is what I think is the, the thread that today links all of us together, is that one very strong quality that actually came out in the 70s. I continued, of course, relentlessly in time <coughs> through a part of the 80s and certainly the 90s, but that kind of magic, that kind of um, uh, um, goal 
golden era, as it were, of the 70s uh, was never really for me, at least, um, found again. Can I just, in case people were sort of confused with Alu's post-coital Bonnie Scott, I have to tell you this story. No, he said pre or post. Pre. Pre. Well, well, that was the lines well, of well. Yeah, so no, so that is because I was doing props for. Yes, yeah, line was post -coital. Hush, let me tell my story. So, for habeas corpus, as usual, I was doing props. And so diligently I went back, I read the script and I made a props list. Now, just to show you how stupid I was, that there was a line in the play that I saw her in the light of a post-coital craven A. I had no clue what a craven A was, but I thought it must be a lamp. So I put it down in my props, <laughs> my props list. And then when we were going through our list, uh, <coughs> so we went, Barry was like, um, okay, 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 this you don't need to worry about. And I was like, but why? I can get it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, did I discover what it was? It was Alu's never let me live it down ever since. But yeah, so that was the way it was. Yeah, how you remember? One of the things, Alu, <coughs> you were talking about the actors. Some actors like to be told what to do and figure it out. I think in terms of the broad thing, and I've seen, I mean, even in film, there are some people who like to be told what to do and they figure it out and they know it like that. The other thing, or one very important thing that we learned through Barry at TAG was the actor is an instrument, voice, body, apart from words, but also of the thought that went into it, the feelings that you put into it, how you layer it all together and how you do polyphonic work uh, in groups. Some of those lessons I've taken into television the odd area of whatever shows we've done. Yeah. Most of our hosts, among whom we count Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, Amir Khan in the South, Chiranjeevi, Surya, Nagarjun, Puneet Rajkumar, uh, you name it, and so on and so forth. I've taken them through some of the exercise. basic lessons and exercises and they loved it. Chaturman Zina. Hey, all the you know, <laughs> karte, swara karte, role play, working things out. Acha, is tar se karte, vaise karte. They loved it. They enjoyed it, and that that really we were introduced to there. And a lot of our work came out of that. Yeah. And what figured it out? And that was something that you know, in a very different way, one has tried to apply and adapt in whatever has happened. But also to come back to the content, I think you know, doing marasa during the emergency. Yeah was was you know a big statement which people now still remind me about as I was mentioning to you the other day. That it was you know it said a lot more. The full name I think Barry will remember. The assassination of Jean Paul Marat and assassination. The, yeah. persecution. persecution and assassination of Jean Paul Marat by the inmate performed by the inmate. What's the point of a revolution without general general copulation? Never mind. And Alu of course was there because he was a terrific intense actor apart from anything else apart from the Bonnie Scott and you know all of that you know so uh, and we also sort of you know were satellites around that. Rosa? Oh my god <laughs> he's gonna bare his teeth but I have I came much later. So, um, so I rifle through Babu's, there's a little, what we call, Atachi case, right? Atachi case has been since college. I think his dad gave it to him, or it was one of those, he really looks like one of those little bags that people used to take. So in that bag, uh, or case, uh, is everything to do with tag. And little posters, little notes, and Barry's very embarrassing stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. So all little, little things, weird kind of creatures, when obviously you guys were doped out, you know, and it was all drawn. And so there's, li there's a little booklet, okay? There's a little booklet of your little doodles, okay? And then we'll say, what is this doodles? So they do this, do this, but very, very fascinating. I've got very fascinated by that. Okay, because it had a little bit of poetry, it has little doodles everywhere floating around and obviously in Barry's inevitable, meticulous, every word, every, it's like calligraphic. So uh, 
uh, so it's beautiful. So I got very fascinated by that. I of course worked with Barry much later and it was very embarrassing because don't remind me, okay? <laughs> Some Joy Roy looking at me because I thought I could act. <laughs> but I could a little bit because that's how I met Babu. But uh, at that time when I met Babu, of course he was so steeped in the whole tag tradition of, you know, we did these crazy workshops where women were chanting and screaming and shouting and I had absolutely no idea what the hell was happening because it was all going over my head. You know, it was like, okay, now I'm going to do, okay, I'm really tired, I just want to have a smoke, okay, so, so all this was happening, obviously it was very, very, energizing or interesting but that was so so every part of Babu's life was obviously so deeply influenced by this man called Barry so this man called Barry I hadn't met when I first met uh, and Mira was the one Mira Nair uh, is the one who introduced us and we did this crazy play in the middle of um, uh, in, in, in a chapel, in the chapel at St. Stephen's College and nobody had done that. So obviously anyway it was completely experimental. Um, so therefore, you know, everybody was like wondering what the hell is happening because it was all movement and dance and a few words here and there and, and well, little Barry, little Barry will tell you that. Anyway, so, Khalid. yeah, of course Khalid was there, of course, the serpent. Yes, and um, Tyreen got to meet, but I think Barry and I have a very different, uh, all I was, all I heard from everybody was how scared shitless they were about, you know, your silences, what is, what is Barry going to say, at what time is he going to say it, and how is he going to say it, okay, so you were obviously a little bit of an ogre, but I didn't see you like that at all because you never taught me, right? <laughs> so I was, so I had a very different relationship with him. I, I've, I've always had a completely mad, right? Very, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a different kind of thing. But yes, I can see this, um, this remarkable influence of, uh, he's had on, on every single person that has been part of the commune, as you call it, everybody. Um, who might be, some of them have been, yeah, big shots in the government. Some of them have definitely, yes, been in the arts and, and the media. Uh, most of them uh, have been in the arts and the media. But uh, this has been one, one recurring thread through their lives. Um, this has also been, um, in fact, if I really count all our friends, it's only from TAG. It's only from the Theatre Action Group. And this is how it has been still to date, how it has got so deeply cemented it is pretty, pretty remarkable, I must say, in a world that is so fractured and everybody, nobody has time, nobody has inclination, people are going in different directions. So, so you must have done something remarkable for that. <laughs> Barry, one question for you. Did you know that it mattered so much what you felt about our work? Did you know how much it mattered to us? That you approved, yeah. that you uh, applauded, that you thought we were good? Applauded. <laughs> <laughs> I never went that far. <laughs> Uh, in the world, no. Yeah. No, no, no. We were all in, all in. You guys forget that I was the first amongst us of, of learning, you know, being on a learning curve. Like I said initially, I had never run a theater group. I, you know, I was madly reading plays to fuck because I was like always <coughs> uptight. What are we going to do? Well, how do I hold this group together? What play is going to do? What's going to work for the Delhi audience? Forget it, forget it. You know. So it it was like relentless. No, I mean to do so so many plays in a year. 
keep afloat? As we did, to keep afloat, but, but, but also to keep busy. Uh, it's phenomenal. I, I ultimately, I mean, I, this is a genuine question from me. How did it happen? You know, at that particular point in history. So, so before you came, before you came here, what did you do in England? Not much. Besides drink beer. Drink beer. <laughs> and watch football. No, seriously. So where did it come from? And you must have had some influence I, I in theatre experience or something. School. I didn't go to an acting school. I went to a college of education. Yeah. I trained to teach drama. You did? To kids. Yeah. yeah. The whole yeah. education so that's side of things. Yeah. Which has always been therefore fundamental to what I've done, you know, yeah. the way I've worked. It's always been important to me. I realize, I, I appreciate the magic of theatre in the way it can impact people. Yeah. yeah. Why I think so it should be there in all schools, for all kids, not just yeah. those who want to become actors and yeah. Shah Rukh Khan's yeah. of the future. Yeah. But for the good that it does. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. It, should be, it should be inducted uh, into all years, corporate yeah. level. I think what you yeah, just said was the key. Because <laughs> you read so much that you gave, you steered the, the group through the kind of plays you had chosen. Yeah, I was open and honest about that. What, what, what else, you know? No, but um, that explains. I, I always shared what I was reading and learning. It was an amazing choice of plays. <laughs> <coughs> and the group read. He made us read. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And that's why that's we right. still read plays today. Yeah, that's right. Played. Nobody else does. Young people don't do that. Yeah, yeah. They don't read, read it. <laughs> so may I cut to something which possibly very few people in this room really know about, which has to do with Barry's uh, love for teaching children. And this was also a very strange, yeah, I will, a very strange set of uh, a constellation of circumstances. So in uh, 1985, I think it was, uh, my sister and I had gone to a uh, Want to a farewell for somebody in the NGO sector, and we met a filmmaker, a different Mira, not, not Mira and I. And she said that uh, she had a sponsor who could um, put money to work with street children. And could we find somebody to actually go out and work with them? And I immediately thought of Cecil, and uh, that Cecil would be wonderful to work with these street children. And um, so we had this little meeting in my house, <coughs> and um, there was this lady, Mira Dohan, her husband, my sister, and I, and we decided to embark on this program. We asked Cecil, and he said yes, he would work, and we nominated a salary at that time of 3,000 rupees a month, which Cecil would get to work with these children. We found 18 children in the railway station, uh, in New Delhi railway station to work with. And uh, like the sponsors who kept disappearing, Mira Dewan disappeared as well. <laughs> so uh, Kanika and I were left with this this baby, these 18 babies and Cecil's salary. Strangely enough, at that point in time, Barry was in Bombay working with the actors for Mira Nair's film, which was also about street children. And from this strange constellation of circumstances came a situation where there was a poster over there of Jivan Ki Gadi which was a play that explored the lives of these street children, which we saw as a way to try and understand where they were coming from, because we kept finding that we were getting blocked in terms of working with these children by not really understanding where they were coming from, and their unwillingness to talk about those, those problems because they were so, so, so traumatic. So we saw Barry as being able to unlock some of this and setting the course for this work. And about a year later, we thought that it would be interesting for the larger body of uh, tag actors to understand what was happening. And we asked Cecil to make a presentation about the work he was doing. And he began it with words from Pablo Neruda, which said, to sleep, perhaps to dream. Perchance. Perchance to dream. Hamlet. Hamlet. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, he quoted Pablo Neruda. It doesn't matter. But the point is, the point is that this really became the driving force for the work that was done with those street children, 
The program was adopted by Teamwork. It was then called Nokkar. Sanjoy was, uh, after Cecil, the first recruit to it and subsequently became the driver for it. And then there was a marriage between Meera Nair and the trust that she set up, the Salam Balak Trust. And these two became now the Salam Balak Trust. And, you know, I think those children and those many generations of children that have gone through Salam Balak Trust owe a very profound debt to Cecil. And those words that he used, because they really set the tone, because that program, Salam Balak Trust, was not just about subsistence. What it did and continues to do through the stellar work of uh, the trustees, of whom the most uh, continuing forces have been Sanjoy and Mrs. Nair, is to encourage these children to dream and to actualize those dreams. So some of the stories are quite legendary, you know. Um, boys who become stellar photographers yeah. have gone on to document what happened with the World Trade Center. Kids who become uh, phenomenal puppeteers, not just working with Dadi, but then becoming puppeteers in their own right, actors and so on. So that really, you know, that, that marriage between social work and the arts was something which every year when one goes back and sees the annual play of Salam Balak Trust, we're still seeing that live. Not just in the lives of those people here who have gone on to make careers in the arts, whether it's um, in theatre or uh, the Jaipur Literature Festival would not have happened if it wasn't for for uh, Sanjoy and my meeting <laughs> in, in Dag. Yeah. Know? But of these children, of whom one would never have expected that they would have found uh, this direction. Yes, yes. Gen next. It is literally Gen next because this was like, I, I came to Dag, I was with Tanks. I hadn't gone to class in St. Stephen's for a year because I was trying to run off to Bihar to work uh, with, uh, with villagers till one day my brother came to me and said, the only way that you will become a Naxalite is in, a limousine, in, a, in an air-conditioned limousine. So you have to get set to have an air-conditioned limousine from where you can lock a bomb. <laughs> but as it happened, it was the end of the year or, or whatever and he said, you know, you haven't been to any class in the philosophy department. and. Uh, I have to give you attendance, so I'll give you attendance if you do two things. One is go and act in Abba's play, and two is come and act in a film that I am doing. So off I went to uh, Abba, it was 1980 or 79, I can't remember when it was. And by which time LSR had forgotten that you all had burned down their theatre, so they'd allowed, it, it was rebuilt and they allowed uh, uh, actors to be back. and. Uh, uh, Ava directed me in uh, um, the diary of Anne Frank, where I played Peter. And uh, thereafter, Tank said that, you know, there's an audition going on uh, in Tag, so you must go. And it was Amadeus. And I landed up playing uh, the Venticelli. And a couple of months after that, that you played one Venticello. Venticello. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> didn't Neil run away at some point of time as well? Wasn't Neil in that Chattagy. story? Chattagy. Chattagy? Anyway, I, I think so, no? Mother, mother was the other way. Yeah, but wasn't Neil at some point? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, a, a couple of months into that, then Barry said, you know, why don't you become Dag's uh, manager? And I remember bumping into Abba and I said, Abba, this is what, uh, so what was it like in your time? And she said, Beware, you will be sucked to be over. <laughs> to think again. And as it so happened, uh, you know, the, the, the next sort of seven or eight years was exactly like that. But nothing had changed in that sense. You know, everybody's been talking about the commune and the community of the 70s in the early 80s, etc. Again, the, I think generations of Thai have had that same inspiration to stay together, love together, work together uh, uh, for no necessary reward and create these communes, I-15, I-17. What was the address, uh, says Annie, what was the address in Jampura that we set up that home for TAG that you all lived in? No, I, I something, anyway, you know, where the, where the theatre and education program started, where the whole street children's program started. And I think obviously that's the philosophy of theatre, 
uh, uh, that, that Barry gave us and all of us gave back to theatre is really what's bound us and continues to bind us together. You have so many generations, of, Divya's not here and Benny is not here and Shah Rukh is not here and another couple of generations after that. But we are all bound to that incredible energy and wonder or a sense of wonderment that theatre brings, uh, uh, brings out in each one of us, both the child and the adult and the responsibility. And uh, as all of you said, it's, for each of us, I think theatre has shaped our lives. And certainly in, in Salaam Bala Trust, and, you know, every year we, have, we look after about 9,500 kids. Many of them go through the theatre and arts program. And for those who are fortunate enough to be on stage in this process, it changes their lives forever. Mm -hmm. And it's never the same. Even the quietest, I remember this, this, this kid called Panchi. So Panchi lived in a forest, very much like the Mowgli of our, of, of our times. And when he was <coughs> rescued and brought to Salaam Bala Trust, he, could, he made uh, bird sounds and he made sounds of animals, but he didn't have any language. And uh, every night he used to escape out of the window and go and sleep on the tree. And uh, the sad thing was at some point of time he felt so bereft from his life that he had come from and so wanting this present life to succeed that he set fire to the tree uh, as a sense of, you know, completely uh, 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 trying to cut himself away from this other life. He went on stage at once at some point of time and without language he was uh, played a little dog. And it really, ch and you could see how it changed him in terms of communication and in terms of skills. And later, of course, we sent him back to a, a place in Andhra near the forest in Warangal, where he now lives very happily. Uh, and that's really the transformation. Theatre transforms. And we know that, we've seen that. Uh, each generation that's passed, the kind of uh, 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 changes that have been made in each one of us through our access to not just the reading or, or the performing, not necessarily only the props or the back, but the philosophy of it, and 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 the and in many ways Barry's sense of democracy, you know, which uh, 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 may have come through through his silences to some extent. But also his thing that everybody could do whatever they wish to. Um, and he engendered that in every <coughs> one of us. And I think that's one of the most important lessons. Perhaps we are misfits of our time, especially today where democracy is at some threat and, uh, you know, uh, the world seems to have lurched to the right or it's that, that, that point of civilization. But that's what I think, you know, each one of us have really got from theatre. And being able to see a point of view from so many different points of view, you know, and being able to learn that, like Russia won, there's not only one point of view and that you can see and understand and empathize that somebody else who has a different point of view from your point of view could also be right and is right because there's no necessarily just one point of view. And that, I think, is the, is the great uh, 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 gift uh, uh, that all of us have received here uh, from theatre. And that's irreplaceable. And when people say uh, the arts, uh, 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 you know, contributes intangibly, I say no. The arts contributes tangibly. Abha has seen that in her school. We've seen that in so many different ways. And it's sad when even today you continue continuously have to fight for the arts to find a place in in the uh, in the nature of things <coughs> as the industrial revolution has passed us and uh, you know and the new revolution is going to be about creativity it's going to be about uh, uh, everybody who has that sense of being able to think outside of the box and the arts and theater and everything that's associated with it is what allows you to do that, is what motivates you and empowers you and gives you that platform to be able to uh, do that extraordinary leap of faith. So in tag with all of us, 
you know, making sure that with very little, as, as somebody said, we were able to do so much, there in itself was a leap of faith. You know, I remember in Tea House of the August Moon where every day there was a crisis. Uh, Viveka's accident, uh, flooding in the basement, uh, sorry, Cecil's accident, uh, flooding in the basement, uh, music, the CDs that I had to rescue from the stretcher as we were trundling across to Sabdita. All of it was a leap and, and nothing ever stopped that process happening. And those are life uh, lessons, you know, that I suspect only the arts and perhaps sports gives you that irrespective of what happens, the show must go on and on and on. <laughs> Can I just add, because you brought up the accident, I remember waking up in, you know, out of somebody was shaking me by the arm and shouting my ear, and the shout was, where are the tapes? <laughs> And so, because the show was about two hours, we had to find somebody else to play them. And that Sanjay was Sa Sanjay. Remember Sanjay? Shiva? Sanjay, the mountaineer. Yeah. Uh, so and Miki, didn't Miki no, play no, no. Viveka's role? Yeah, Miki played Viveka's role and Sanjay had to play the music. So I went to Raksha Bhavan, right. sat him in the car and played the tapes in my car tape recorder on the way to the on the way to uh, Kamani saying that this is where this cue comes and this is where this cue comes yeah the you know why all this happened this 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 whole sort of the unfolding struggles of uh, tag and that was because Macbeth is supposed to be a very unlucky play to stay. <laughs> and I remember that when we were setting out for the production of A. Macbeth, this was something that kept coming up. That is this, well, the word auspicious wasn't used, but is this the play that we should be launching with? So that's the sort of Macbeth tax we've paid. But in the process, I think as you very eloquently pointed out, that it has been a tremendous journey of learning. And I think that learning has come more from uh, who Barry is than what he actually concretely, consciously uh, manifest as a teacher. And I think that many of our own, so much of our own evolution and learning paralleled his own growth. And, and, and we could see that in the way his skills <coughs> have changed, his, uh, his, his, his sense of the grand from the minimalist, how that began to get uh, juxtaposed. <coughs> I think that it also taught us to live again, you know, all the struggles, the lack of money. Uh, part of the learning was to live with scarcity, to live with very little. And that wasn't just about production. We have actually seen and struggled about you know, uh, reused tea leaves because there wasn't enough money uh, in Barry's kitchen for a cup of tea for all the people who had gathered there to rehearse. So I think that in, in, in looking at, at the origins of the, of, of the theatre group, uh, that it, it really was the, 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 the personal qualities of the protagonist, Barry, and, uh, and of the players who engaged with, them, with him and were impacted uh, in, in, the, in the ways that they handled situations and crises which would have destroyed many other groups and uh, many other groups <coughs> came apart because there weren't the kind of stakeholders uh, that uh, 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 initiative needs to survive. And also the, the amazing quality of succession, that how this tradition got handed down, not mm. consciously in, in the terms of handing over a baton from uh, Dai to Abha to, to, Abha, to <coughs> Vidyan to, uh, you know, Sanjoy, Sanjoy yeah. and, and, and down the line. Right. And uh, uh, you know, my, my brief narrative was, and I, and I, and I, and I really feel that you know, part of that, that kickstart has uh, uh, much more to do with Dai uh, than we have, uh, you know, been, we have articulated. Because, uh, you know, I, I in, in, in the first sort of seven years that we were really looking at, I spent five, five of those up, you know, studying abroad. And when I was in Oxford doing theatre, and many of my dark nights of the soul, it was I in London that I, you know, rushed to and sprawled on her floor. 
to sort of you know pick me up and send me back. And uh, in all the plays that I did at, at Oxford, and it was Di who came to every single production. And it was <coughs> me and the cast out to dinner. And I, so I, I think it was, you know, the, the kickstart was the, you know, the, the, the combination of uh, Di and Barry. And, and, and Di's tremendous tenacity. I mean, here was someone, uh, I mean, this may embarrass her, but you know, I spent my first Christmas in Ireland. And the family ran a stud farm. And uh, my sort of favorite memory of Dag was, you know, a call that said, put down a hundred pounds in red rum. So red rum was the, you know, was, was their horse. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, uh, they'd won the Grand National. Wow. And so it was an upstairs, and you know, when you came into the gate, you needed binoculars to see the house. And so this was the kind of background that she came from. And Giles Havagol at the Citizen Theatre in Glasgow was a very, it was an iconic theatre director of, of, of the regional theatre, and she was his stage manager. And so to leave all that behind, and, and, and those of us in the early trips, uh, you know, the kind of, uh, how do I put this, uh, a very basic existence and, 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 and passion uh, that uh, drove her to accommodate and adjust to this culture of uh, scarcity. And, and, and it wasn't just... You know, human element. Yeah, human <laughs> element. Exactly. And, 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 and the way she and, and, and Barry, uh, you know, particularly that, that, that first tour, I think this is what, what Babu is, uh, is, is pointing to, and I think the intensity of that for about six weeks uh, at the, I, the National Theatre were... The Sri, Ram <coughs> Sri Ram Center. Sri Ram Center. Were truly transforming because they were not just preparing us for him at Beth, but they were preparing us as human beings. And both physically, because the, the exercises and things that we had to do were very physically demanding, uh, and also emotionally, in terms of uh, you know, the teamwork that emerged in TAG later, was really really a, a, a follow through of the trust building exercise. I, mean, I remember simple ones that you, know, you just fall and live yes. and, and the fall. There were a whole range of exercises. So in fact, on, on Barry's part, it wasn't just the theater or the brilliance of his uh, visualization or planning or, or uh, nuancing theater, but it was also shaping the actor in ways that the actor didn't always understand. And then, and then it emerged in performance, enriching the performance. Uh, I surely must have been one of his great failures because uh, Dai has just brought in uh, a set of reviews uh, from uh, Ireland, from her collection. And I, you know, I, I hesitated handing them out here, but now I will, make, I will make the confession. Because the first review that I picked up was in the Times of India, who said Rajiv Mehrotra's performance was very mediocre, despite the direction of Barry <laughs> I have hesitated, but I shall hand that over uh, you know, to the archives uh, for posterity. So it is now documented. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <Yeah. laughs> Raji, you directed plays at Oxford and otherwise that uh, Khaled has been performing in Europe and all over the place. They let send a message to the WhatsApp group saying that, you know, that thing started. She's performed all over the world now with her plays. That's one thing I wanted to just come back to, that apart from everything that we learned, about all the learning curves and everything like that, I think Tag Barry did some landmark productions, which were really very different in uh, how they came across content presentation, and in terms of you know completely radically different, and they made a mark. I certainly remember the ones that I was part of, but you know, everybody will have recounts. Yeah. You know, it was it was that culture. It was uh, you know we saw Marta, we saw you know, you know you know the productions that we did. Because look at the, the rest of the, the theater, the culture of theater. I mean, how many, z you know, zillions of times, you know, have you seen, you know, the productions in, you know, different languages of Waiting for Cotto? And, and, and it was Barry who introduced us uh, you know, through this process. And, and, and it, you know, Marowitz didn't just try to play. Charles Marowitz had evolved a whole approach to training the actor. And the introduction to uh, Marowitz with Macbeth is a whole you know, chapter on the preparation of the actor. And the reason I mentioned uh, Waiting for Butter was 
that again, I mean, that is a production that involves the actor as an empowered, uh, uh, internally empowered, and manifesting in very subtle ways intense internal processes. And I think it was Barry's capacity through his silences, and I think that's worth a study somewhat, you know, about detail, reflection. And I mean this very seriously, because here's a man who didn't talk, and when he was upset, he would just step aside and sulk. No, no, he used to go pour a book and start yeah. doing the things yeah, yeah, in the yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah. That, that came later, but yeah, in, 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 in our time, he would just disappear. Yeah. And, and, and we would all be terrified, have we lost Barry forever? Where is he gone? And these search parties would go on, you know, and then they would try to say, you know, where is Barry? And this would happen a few days. He's having a pregnant pose. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't know pregnant. how Di coped with that. Yes, right. Yeah. How did you cope with that? <laughs> we just went. Barry's having a pregnant pause. We were just doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes out. But one thing that I want to say that you, you've all said so much about everything else, but there is one word that you haven't used, and that's magic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And magic is what fears is about as well. And you did manage to produce magic, and that's a great deal to do with Barry. But it's also to do with all of you. And if there isn't magic in the theatre, you haven't done it. Magic is what transformed. And I think that was really good. Well, so we shall give Barry his... Thank Revity, Revity. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, a minute. Yeah. wait a minute. We are not through yet, Sanjay. <laughs> so uh, we have to give, and as, as Barry said uh, before we started, he said, you know, a James Joyce kind of stream of consciousness <laughs> would be the most appropriate way of approaching the... Oh, no. So, Barry. <laughs> that is a gentleman here. No, 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 no. He, he's, he's going to thank you. That's I'm going to thank you, but... Yes, you have to finish before we thank you. You're saying something to Gosh, I mean, what, what is left to say after all that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, how about a pregnant pause for the next five minutes? No, that's too long. <laughs> Two minutes. Just, would it be appropriate to mention some of the people who've departed and mm -hmm. just yes. acknowledge their, their contribution? Do you, would you like to do that, Sanjay? He's asking you. Sanjay. No, Sanjay. No, Sanjay. To Sanju, 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 you didn't uh, say anything. Yes. He's a. All the people who died. I have a few words. Just to acknowledge Amit Bhatia. Amit Bhatia. I think he was the first to leave us. Uh, Ravi, no. Ramesh Venkat. Ramesh Venkat Raman. Arun Varma. Ravi. Arun Varma. Ravi. Yeah. Arun Varma. Ravi. 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 Yeah. yeah. I remember Ramesh Venkat Raman. Uh, uh, Barry and I went to his house one day. He was, wasn't he dancing donkey? Was he the donkey and dancing donkey? Mm -hmm. And he had driven both Barry and me completely mad. And we went and sat and spoke to his mother for a long time to say, Your son! And you! And blah, 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 etc., etc. And well, it's sad that he's not with us anymore. And uh, who else? Ravi! Ravi! Yeah, Ravi! 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 Oh, that's such a long reason. No, just briefly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he no, had, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, he had, uh, uh, what's it called? A hemophilia, and uh, he always used to have, uh, used to always fall ill, and always was missing, and we had to yeah. go back again and again, and uh, yeah, and Arun and uh, Pam. No. Pam, I think, was the first to leave. No, Arun. Oh, oh Arun was the first. And all strange accidents. Everyone stepped back to take a photograph from some cliff and fell off, and that was a bridge, it. A bridge. A bridge. A bridge in Arunachal. Yeah, in Arunachal. Pam in an accident not so far away from here. I mean, in the next traffic light, in fact, when the car jumped from across the divider and, and, and hit her. Um, Nandan Soni. Nandan Soni. Uh, Amit, and I remember Amit calling me from uh, Ames and saying, you know, the doctor's given me, I was, I was in London or wherever. The doctor's given me one week, so you have to come and see me. And I'm saying, I mean, it's only the good die young. There's no way you're going to die. Just hang in there. I'll be back. And the day I was back, he'd already died by that time. That was like super sad. And most recently, somebody who wasn't an wasn't, uh, actor, but Ravi Nath, who was the first Ravi Nath, yeah. Chartered Accountant. Yeah. The second, no, 
So it was uh, Agarwal who used to live in Nizamuddin. Do you remember? Second, was it later? Was it later? Meera Agarwal's. Uh, Meera, yeah. And then Venkat came at some point of time. Venkat, he came in the. 85. 85. Ravi was there. So may they all be having a blast and doing a play out there. Yeah. <laughs> Ravati, you haven't said a word. Come on, Ravati. No, everyone has said everything. I came along with Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we are. <laughs> I came in 85. Uh. And uh, I... He danced in the production. What did you do? <laughs> Held his hand. <laughs> I did actually, I took over from Vidyun and I started doing props and production and you know things of that kind. I continued through like Bharat says through the 80s and the 90s till Tag kind of went to sleep. I was there in all the productions. I enjoyed myself. I remember distinctly once telling Barry, Barry I have to thank you for all that I am. He says, don't blame me. <laughs> don't blame me. <laughs> 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 but I can honestly say that whatever I am is thanks to what I learnt in TAG. Honestly. It's all that you people mentioned today about working together, being part of the highs and the lows together and being there for each other. I think that's what has stood by me in my life till now. Thank you, TAG. <laughs> Sanjay? Sujita. <laughs> that's Sanjoy. That's Sanjay. <laughs> मैं भी 83 में पहली बार बैंड सेट से मिला था। जब शूट हो रही थी फिल्म मैसी साहेब, राइट? उसके बाद आई मेट सांजॉय, और आई सेड आई वांट टू जॉइन फेक्स ग्रुप, क्योंकि उसमें प्रोडक्शन था, तो और मैं प्रोडक्शन नहीं कर सकता था उस समय। मैं थोड़ा बहुत ड्राइंग करता था। इससे मेरे को इंटरेस्ट आया सेट्स के लिए सेट डिजाइनिंग वगैरह में जो बैरी सर से मैंने बहुत सीखा वो जर्नी मुझे टेलीविजन तक लेके आई थिएटर से थिएटर दस साल किया 83 से 93 तक उसके बाद मैंने ये अपना एक सेट मेकर्स कंपनी को जिसके साथ साथ बाबू के लिए भी मैंने काफी काम किया और लोगों के लिए काफी काम किया। फिर ये सब के बीच में मुझे लगा कि एक जो बैरीज़र का सपना है कि सिखाने का, वो सिखाना हम लोग सिर्फ थिएटर से पूरा नहीं कर सकते, क्योंकि जब भी हम कुछ जैसे कहा कि स्पONSORS, जब भी हम प्ले करते हैं हमें स्पONSOR नहीं मिलते, चाहे हम कितने ही अच्छे प्ले कर रहे हों, कहाँ कर रहे हैं? चाहे वो छोटे आरोटोरियम में हो या बड़े आरोटोरियम में हो, आज जब हम लोग थिएटर करते थे तो थिएटर की कॉस्ट होती थी पर डे सेवेन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड समथिंग लाइक दैट। आज सत्तर हजार नब्बे हजार पर डे और वो भी डे नहीं, दो बजे से लेकर रात के दो बजे, सॉरी दस बजे तक। उसके बाद कुछ भी करना है। चाहे आपने सेट लगाना है कुछ करना है दस हजार पर घंटा तो जो हम लोग मैं सेट से शुरू करता हूँ क्योंकि मैंने सेट का काफी काम किया टैग में बहुत अच्छे अच्छे इम्पोर्टेंट तो बीइंग अर्निस्ट आई वाज द बिगेस्ट सेट तीन हाँ नॉइज़ ऑफ़ ऑफ़ तो बहुत सारे तो उस वो जो दौर था जो सेट्स का वो अब शायद देखने को नहीं मिलेगा क्योंकि इतना महंगा हो गया थिएटर करना और स्पॉन्सर्स जो हैं वो थिएटर को स्पॉन्सर नहीं करते जिस तरीके से होना चाहिए ग्लैमरस <coughs> कुछ कर रहे हैं तो हो सकता है पर आर्ट आर्ट नहीं हो सकता उस पैसे से तो नहीं हो सकता तो फिर हम लोगों ने सोचा कि अब कुछ नया तरीका निकाला जाए सिखाने का तो फिर हमने स्कूल शुरू किया उसका नाम था इमावो स्कूल ऑफ एक्टिंग दिल्ली में 96 वी स्टार्टेड इन नोएडा टुगेदर और वो धीरे-धीरे चलते-चलते बॉम्बे पहुंचा उसका नाम हमने रखा बैरीजोना एक्टिंग स्टूडियो अभी दिल्ली में है और मैं सबके साथ हूँ इतने जब से तब से अब तक साथ में हूँ 
आई एम नोट डिफरेंट तो ये मेरी जर्नी है और मैं कमिटेड हूं बैरी सर के लिए All of us have found our paths and continued. The one person who stayed true to yeah. Barry and perhaps the, the the memory of Tag has always been Sanjay. Yes. And irrespective of which year, which time of the year, whatever, yeah. if there's anything to do with Tag, Sanjay is the first one to call and say, oh, uh, "We're going to celebrate this anniversary." Barry's agreed to do three plays or twenty-five plays or one play <laughs> or half a play or whatever. <laughs> Please, you have to help, and we have to make this happen. Or tag, very happen. And he continues to to keep uh, uh, tag, which is now in, in many ways no more. It drives now many reasons. All of us, I think, owe a great deal to Sanjay for not just the memory of tag living on, but also to a large extent creating a platform for Barry uh, to continue to be in, in uh, to be yeah. here. And uh, creating something for him that he can then contribute and give back uh, in so many different ways. So Sanjay, thank you. I think all of us. इसमें आप सबका contribute है कि क्योंकि आपने जो last word. Are you crying? स्कूलिटी themselves honestly themselves and to speak truthfully about their experience uh, it's the most difficult thing in the world it's so funny we're so i guess it's the influence of the media these days and uh, a fashion the whole idea of becoming a bollywood star you know puts people into such a insane mode <laughs> that to be able to break them out of it uh, again mm. especially in mumbai Yeah. Hey, it's like something else. <clears throat> anyway. Oh. So yeah, that's theater. Uh, one always gets back to theater. One always. Uh, uh, what's the word? I mean, one knows that theater is what it is, and it's the best training ground. It's the best educator. Not only for actors, like did I say it earlier, that whatever you want to be in life, in terms of sorting yourself out, knowing yourself, being, giving you the confidence to stand up and be yourself in a group, you know, even when you're even when you're standing alone. I think this. I believe this, and you know, I think. Uh, It's these human qualities and and the humanities, as you said, the arts. However, you wish to, uh, to describe that whole world of story and painting and expression and theater, filmmaking, of course. Uh, but what kind of filmmaking? Um, like I said, I, I I've done it and relentlessly because I. I thoroughly believe in it. I just know that it's a good thing to be doing, despite the poverty, despite the problems, the hassles, the politics. Of, thank God we live in a country where politics doesn't interfere too much. Yeah, we did Maharashtra. <laughs> Do you think it was Jesus? It's not every country. We could be dead in another country, or locked up in prison for the rest of our lives. But fortunately, we. We live in a sensible society <laughs> at the end of the day, which which does accommodate and uh, allows us to do what we want to do, which is which is a great thing, especially with children, because that's where it all starts. I think if you if you've been a kid in school and you've missed out on playing the whole imaginative journey that that comes with 
with a drama class and being in a play and uh, learning to write and create and tell your tell a story. That's extremely sad. That's what many children do. Many children leave school, they can't sing, they can't dance, they mm -hmm. apart from what they imitate from the media. But in ter I'm talking about in terms of an artist's uh, creating from inside himself, out of himself. You know? That's that's where the real education lies. Uh, so then you own the education that is generated. Whatever experiences we've had, you're here. I mean, look at this. <laughs> after having packed up in 1998, after 25 years, of, that's a good age for a theatre group. 25 years. Um, 20 years later on, we're still happy to get together and meet together and talk about the same old bloody stories. Losers. Nothing <laughs> Just to see how much more grey hair we've got and how more wrinkles we are, how the pot is developing, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's, um, it's, that's the magic that so much good will, good faith, so much love can be spread quite incidentally, just quietly, magically, <coughs> it occurs without anybody preaching anything. It happens of its own accord through the work. That's the magic. God bless you, all of you who made the effort to be here tonight. Uh, not, I'm not that I'm taking. Uh, you know, uh, any responsibility. The responsibility, of course, goes to Kirti to thank her and uh, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to be here and to have this experience. Thank you for coming. Well, I'm a shock Vajpayee. I happen to be brother-in-law of Kirti. <laughs> and also the chairman of Natran. So I'm here to thank you all. You're a poet. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. He's an anti-national poet. <laughs> yes, like you, I have been practicing the dismal art of verse making for my life. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Uh, okay, if anybody wants to say something. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Or you can say it. Also the part of tank, a plain Sudhuri Kissa, Sudhuri. where Rashi yeah. Sriyarthi, Vitraj, Manoj Bajpai, and especially Piyush Vidal, he uh, wrote the lyrics and composed the music. So I do have a very wonderful experience. And not on the tag, in a TIE company, yeah. when the Kirti Jain was the director and Barry John was invited over there. and. From passing out from NSD, that act, acting skill was there, but the teaching had, I could, uh, you know, enhance and enrich because of the valley. And uh, like this Gordon Valley, you have acting skill as well as the teaching quality. So that artist terminology, we learned from Barry, like Barry just uh, said that self, how do you know yourself? interacting with the children, conducting the workshop with the parents and teachers. That was a wonderful experience and it's because of Barry John's guidance I could complete my PhD on theatre its significance in education. Thank you very much. Well, thanks. Uh, we started this project last year. Oh, sorry. Like thank us <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Uh, good evening. First of all, I would like to thank uh, people sitting at that desk and people sitting uh, off the desk. I am not from St. Stephen. I come from a small town, Amrissa. I happen to know Mr. Siddharth. I don't know whether you remember me or not. We were together in Taj. I am Vikram Nair. Okay. <laughs> So I was a, tra a management trainee, I think you were in the sales department, I was much younger to you. Cultural attaché. Cultural attaché. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, I've heard a lot about you. You're more famous as Barry John. 
your tag group is not that famous, number one. <laughs> number two, you have been very successful, very well known. To whom do you attribute your success to? And uh, number three, you must have heard of Mr. Anil Dhawan. I don't really feel... Oh. Hello, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't really think uh, you need some training for acting because I've got my own experiences. Anil Dhawan, we've all heard about. He was gold medalist from Pune Institute, Film Institute, and he was not successful. <coughs> there are so many more names I don't remember. And what we like to say about this, Anil Dhawan, gold medalist from Pune Institute. Um, yeah, sadly I can't place him, uh, but uh, he's still with us. He's still alive, but he's. Well, no, I'm not saying uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about success. He was not successful as a Bollywood star. Yeah. So what what else could he do with his life? Oh, my ideas, my questions. Uh, do you really think acting? Uh, for acting, you need a training, and I personally yes. think is involuntary. Yes. No. It's not enough. I mean, of course, inborn talent uh, is not to be ignored and it's appreciated, but it's not all that is required these days to make the grade. I don't have formal training. I work with a guy called Karnal Kapoor. You are not here to express your opinion. It's not okay. So I'm just sharing related to that only. So, Kapoor, the, the, uh, the documentary called Mitas that was played on traffic bullets. We were not given any dialogue. We were told to, you know, speak the dialogue on the spur of the moment. We did that. We had no idea, no inkling about what we had to do. But that was a very successful documentary with us. Yes, different directors work in different ways. Some people work without a script. They encourage you to be more natural and develop the dialogues yourself. That is a possibility. Yeah, but most people don't work like that. Then you get stuck. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, so, Natran Pratishtha started this project last year in which we invited some of the groups which are either no longer active or perhaps active continually and to hear from them their own experiences, thereby creating another archive. Performing arts are the most perishable. They keep on disappearing while they appear. So there is this which strange dialectics of presence and absence. So we thought that in times when amnesia is, you know, is, is the order of the day and there are forces which are trying to wipe out all memories and sort of replace them with their own imagined uh, happening, it is important to remember what some people, some groups have done in theatre, for instance. And this is what we have been doing. Last year we had four groups, <coughs> and this year we have four groups. It is a, an exercise, I mean, it's an experience for us also, who are not from performing arts, as to how these arts create a sense of community. They create a sense of living memory. They create a sense of magic and wonderment, to borrow your word. They create a sense that we can still change the world in some small ways. Although somebody said that I came to theatre not to change but just to enjoy it. The old, was it Greek or the Romans who said to delight and to instruct. Most of us don't want to instruct and yet the very fact of delighting create some kind of an instruction of which several of you are living examples. So thank you very much. This was a most enjoyable evening and so many of you are still there in spite of the fact that tag is not there but in a sense and this is what happens to the performing arts. They may not exist tangibly but they exist in memory and that is what counts. And this is the memory we are trying to preserve to the extent it is possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.